Well, tubers, we got a problem. So we're back over here working on this old dinosaur. I've done a couple of videos about this already. We overhauled the gearbox. Uh, there was another one I think we did some maintenance on it. If y'all want to see it or check it out, I'll put some links in the description. You can go watch the rest of the videos about it. This well here was drilled in 1921. Uh, it is the oldest well that I own, and it's about, I don't know that it's the best, but it's one of the best. It may be the best. Uh, the unit's extremely old. I don't know actually what the date would be on it. I, I imagine it's probably uh, pre-Second World War easily. I know for a fact it is. Um, but the well was drilled in 1921. I guess let's jump in this thing. We're going to have to take this thing apart, take this to the machine shop, either turn this down or weld it up and turn it down or something. This actually has already kind of happened on the other side. This shiv used to be over here and it was a pressed fit. It didn't have a hub or anything in it. And it started moving, but I caught it before it wore anything out. And I put a one with a QD style hub on it and drove a bolt in it. I did some harbor freighting. Tools are kind of disposable out here. I wish I had my impact wrench. I don't remember doing that, but uh, it's a heck of a keyway. I guess it worked. I, I know that I did do that. This thing leaks a little bit, as you can see. It's uh, probably not a terrible deal that this happened. We can fix it right, and it needs to be sealed, obviously. simple bearing must not be very tight <laughs> well let's go home I have made the executive decision to scrap this thing for several reasons shaft is cheap relatively speaking uh, my time is not and uh, I want to get this done with the least amount of effort as possible so this side over here is got is where it, it's came loose and wore this out and i want to i would have to weld this up probably all the way back here it's got a pretty good groove cut too where the seal runs and turn all that back down the same way with this side this ship came loose quite a few years ago and this is lufkin lufkin does everything the hard way the way they want to do it there's no logic in it lufkins are great units uh, but they do everything the hard way um, This would have originally been this original shiv and I guess this one probably too uh, Lufkin puts bigger keyways and everything than what is standard This has got a three-quarter inch wide keyway and a two and a quarter shaft and normally that would be half inch That's why I had the bolt driven in it because you can't put a regular uh, Keyway in it 
keyway in the shiv would be smaller. Now, this originally, the way Lovkin would have done it, was everything was pressed together. Uh, there's no hubs or anything. It's all pushed together in a big press. To fix this, this really needs welded up. The keyway needs welded up. This needs all welded up, keyway welded up. Everything turned back around and new keyways cut in it. If you're gonna do that, you might as well throw that thing away. And so that's what I decided I'm going to do. The other thing too is this has been knurled and if you remember this, this bearing was kind of loose. I mean, it was not loose, but it wasn't, it wasn't super pressed tight like I would like it. And um, this must have been turned undersized in the factory and they knurled it to make the bearing stick on there. So this is uh, two and seven eighths roughly. This is a two and three eighths bearing and two and a quarter. This will be two and three eighths plus two or three thousandths. So I got this sitting in here. I got to get it running semi straight so that when I put a center in it and I turn this from three inch to two and seven eighths, it ends up cleaning up. I, I guess honestly, it probably doesn't matter. All it is is just effectively a spacer, uh, but we want to do a reasonably good job. So, okay, so this is a called a center drill. It's a little short, fat drill, and it's got two purposes. For one, it's short and fat, and it's got a fine tipped end, and it won't flex like a normal drill bit. It's, it's very rigid. Uh, the second thing is that this cuts from, from here to here is a 60 degree taper. I think 60 degree, I could have that number wrong, which it's a standard, which matches these centers. I don't know if you can see that. So anyway, we'll drill a center hole. And after we get the hole drill, we'll put the center in this in this tailstock uh, and we can run it into it and that's going to hold it rigid with these two tapers meeting. It gives a uh, strong contact patch. Yeah. So I need to switch tools here. This is all brand new. I used to use a different insert style to cut back towards the chuck and uh, that's dumb you know you can't use the same inserts and so I bought this this is cheap Chinese uh, this is nice American made uh, but this is the insert this is a carbide insert that actually does a cutting there's six uh, you know three cutting edges on each side and this is a wedge style it's my favorite you just stick it in there hold it down with your thumb and there is an allen head thing in the bottom that, that runs an eccentric the little bolt going through it's eccentric and eccentric when you turn it it locks and wedges in there. So this is a somewhat normal orientation to cut up against a chuck, but I'm kind of out of room here. It probably would have been better uh, to turn this and put the tool in, you know, facing the other direction on this side. It would just kind of gave us more room to work here, but this is going to work. It's just kind of tight. Okay, this stuff is all new and it does not have the height set on this tool. Uh, the, the height is important. You want it to be roughly in the middle. Sometimes there is a, a this is not always true, but 99% of the time you want the edge of the tool to be uh, in line with the center of the machine. A real easy way to do this, to get a rough, a rough estimate, is to take your ruler and pinch it between your tool and the workpiece. And you want to adjust the workpiece so that the ruler is perfectly up and down. 
and this will give you a pretty good indication of whether or not the tool is in the center. It's probably better for the, for the tool to be just a little bit low than it is to be high, but nonetheless it needs to be uh, relatively close. Go ahead and snug my jam nut up here and we won't have to adjust this again. Okay, we're going to come down here to six and one half inch. Wasn't that what it was? And I'm going to take this stop and just push it up against the carriage. I'm not actually going to lock it down. Eh, wouldn't hurt. Yeah, might as well snug it up a little bit. From this point forward, this will limit our travel and this will make the shoulder where the bearing sits. Now at this point, I've got quite a bit of material to take off here. This is about two and seven eighths. Let's see where we're actually at. Yeah, two inch, eight ninety. I never did measure it. It's about two and seven eighths, and we got to go to two and three eighths. So I got quite a bit of material to move here. I'm gonna knock this out real quick. Okay, so our bearings, the idea of the bearings is exactly two and three eighths inches. That's 2.375 inches. And we want an interference fit here. We want this shaft to be bigger than the bearings so that when you push the bearings on it, it actually swells them a little bit and they stick on here. That number is about, you know, that I made up is about two thousandths of an inch. We want this to be about two thousandths of an inch bigger than the bearings. Uh, two to three, two being a minimum, but being also my preferred number. And if you end up a little bit bigger than that, you uh, you still be okay. That is kind of tight to go on. Uh, there is exactly one hundred thousandths to take off this before we get to that size. And I'm going to be real smart aleck here. And what I'm going to do is that's why I hadn't pulled my machine out. Is we're going to run the machine forward exactly one hundred thousandths, or actually about. 98 and we'll take off cutting and when we get about here i'll stop the machine to measure it and if it's going to be right on i'll just go ahead and take the uh the finish cut with the rough cut there and we'll call it good most likely it probably will be um it, it's not going to line up perfect and if we have to change anything i'll abandon that because if we undersize that a little bit it will not work and the correct way to do this the way i like to do it is we'll leave about 30 thousandths to take off We'll take a 10 thousandths cut, measure it. Whatever is left, whether it be 18 or 21 or 22, we'll cut in half. We'll go in half of that, take that cut and measure it. And then whatever that final, what is left is exactly how much we'll move the machine. And by having those three cuts back to back, any kind of load or spring that's in the machine, you'll be able to sort of equalize it. But we're gonna be smart, Alex, if we can get lucky here. So we are two inch, three seventy five, six, seven, and three tenths. All right, that's not normally how you do that. That was that was kind of lucky. <laughs> so the next thing I got to do is we're going to turn this down to from two and three eighths to two and a quarter from about here to about right there. Okay, so this size here is not as critical. We had to get this here within about five ten thousandths of an inch, plus or minus. This size, just having a, a, a shiv go on it, you know, plus or minus one or even two is probably acceptable. Of course, we're gonna get it close as we can. Uh, I've got about 50, 
uh, 45 thousandths to go off here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up here about 10 thousandths oversize for where this seal sits. So I did a terrible job explaining why I was going to oversize this spot there where the seal runs. When this shaft is completely finished, I'll take emery cloth or sandpaper and I'll polish the area where the seal runs. Uh, and this just gives a smoother finish. It makes the seal last longer. If there's a little rough burr or something, it won't tear the seal up. And I want to start with something that's a little bit larger than it needs to be so that I can sand a few thousandths off and still end up, you know, not being undersized. And if it ends up, you know, five or six or eight thousandths oversized, the seal isn't going to care. Okay, so we're done with this half of it. The next thing we've got to do is take this out of the machine and flip it over so we can make the, uh, make the other side. Okay, the next critical measurement is from face to face. Uh, it's got to be within, you know, reasonably tight tolerance. I mean, it could probably be out as much as like a sixteenth. Uh, but I just put a tape measure on it. It looks like it measures to me at 15 and a quarter. This being uh, American made stuff it is probably you know uses round numbers it's not going to be you know 15 inches and 50 thousandths or something and so we're going to go i don't have a pair of calipers that long you know let's see those are i got a set of 14 inch but i don't have a set of 16 inch so how we're going to do this is i am going to eyeball Looking down this, this carriage to where the edge of that tool lines up flat with the edge of of this uh, whatever that you call this, this lip there we just made. Okay, so this hand wheel here is one inch per revolution. We're going to set that dial to zero, and we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and one hundred, two hundred and fifty thousand. Okay, I made a mistake. It's fourteen and a quarter, not fifteen and a quarter, and I'm sure y'all probably all caught that. Okay, so we're going to back up past that. That would be 14, 100, 200, 250. All right, that looks more reasonable. Okay, this is going to be exactly the same deal. I want to turn this to two and three eighths. All right, so we're sitting about three thousandths, three and a quarter thousandths, something like that. Oh, that's dead on three. Uh, it's a little bit on the big side, but this shaft's hot and it's going to shrink a little bit. It's probably 200 degrees. 
It'll shrink a little bit as it cools. Let's let this sit. We'll measure it in the morning. And, uh, and then if we need to take a couple of tents or something off of it, we'll just sand it off. And I'll finish turning this tomorrow. So last operation on this lathe, that's one of the reasons I left these, um, where the seal's gonna ride a little bit big. We're gonna take some emery cloth and sort of polish these, uh, make them as smooth as we can before we get a seal riding on it, because if they're rough, uh, they will leak a little bit and it will, uh, I don't know this, but I always assumed it probably would make the seal not last as long. So I got the shaft pulled out of the lathe and sitting over here on my horizontal mill in a couple of vices. I've done a video about this mill, it's pretty cool. I've kind of lubed it up. I spent a little bit of time greasing it, hadn't ran in a while. Um, but you can go check out that other video. I'll put a link in the description or something. But I gotta get these vices squared up. This needs to be pretty parallel with the machine. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if it's off, the keyway is going to you know, get deeper on one end. And it also needs to be pretty level. It should already be level just sitting in these vices, but we'll, uh, we'll check and find out. I bought, so this machine has got a brownish sharp number 10 taper. It's kind of unusual. There's not a lot of tooling available. I had a few oddball end mill holders and I got on Fleabay and bought a um, iCarbide as the brand. It's a brownish sharp number 10 to ER32 collet. Well, I got cuttings all in my spindle. Um, it doesn't fit. <laughs> no worky. So I had a side project today, and I should have recorded, I guess, but I made a um, collet holder, and uh, it, it seems to work pretty good. It, uh, I'll probably just seated it right back out. There it goes. Anyway, I got the tape right. Um, we'll check run out on it in a minute. Hopefully, it's pretty true. I had to, you know, when I cut it, I had to machine it this way and cut a taper and then pull it out and flip it over and cut the taper for the for the collet. Uh, I'll show you what the inside of it looks like in a minute and uh, and then thread it. All right, see if I can get you high enough here. You can kind of tell what's going on. So I have got both of these vices snugged up. And this should have both of these vices in line the shaft is straight, but I have got to get them in this orientation. They need to be correct in this way. And so I'm going to sort of guess center here. I'm going to just ever so slightly snug up one of these. Okay, that zero is about center of that. So what I want to do is move the table down so it'll clear everything. Okay, so this side needs to come back about... Th okay, so that's uh, about 12 thousandths off from one end to the other. And that's plenty close enough for this. Okay, we gotta put our collet adapter in there. I've learned to make sure these are oiled and make sure that you don't knock them in too hard because it does not take much. But I like that, and you'll have to get a hammer after that thing to get it out. All right, these collets, they, uh, if you're not familiar with these, these collets have got a, uh, this nut has got an offset ring in it that grabs in this groove. They just snap in really easy. But once you tighten them up, when you go to release them, these will automatically pull this back out. So this is the first time that I've actually had an end mill tied in this thing. For a hundred year old machine and a homemade tool holder with Chinese collets at a Chinese end mill, that's like a half thou run out. <laughs> okay, at this point, we've got to get this keyway in the right place, which goes without saying, but we gotta figure out how to get it there. And so what I'm gonna do, we're gonna crank this machine up, take a piece of paper, and we're gonna hold a piece of paper right here, and we're going to crank the machine up slowly when we get close until it pulls this piece of paper out of our hand. Just like that, okay? We'll back the machine up, 
Looks like I actually touched it. And we're going to bring the bed up half of the diameter of this plus half the diameter of the cutter, which would be two and a quarter, two and three quarter, and half of that would be an inch and, and three eighths, is that right? One inch, 375 thousandths. All right, I'm gonna turn our dial here. I know y'all probably can't read this. I can't very well. Turn our dial here to zero. And we're going to go up. There's one, two, three. Oh, by the way, every turn's a tenth of an inch. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's an inch, inch one, inch two, inch three, and 40, 50, 60, 75. Lock the table, lock the vertical. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in, come in until we bump it. Which would be right there. We're gonna turn our dial here to zero. Now I am personally not a big fan of uh, open keyways where the key sticks out the end every once in a blue moon I've had those things come out and cause you trouble. That's possibly what might have happened To what caused all this and I like capturing keyways where you started in the keyway both in the shaft So I'm about a quarter inch in right there Drill on into this thing down here try to get us cut about a hundred thousand Let that run there at about seven this minute. Where'd my Earl can go? All right, first pass there's a hundred thousand deep. Here's what our cut's looking like so far. Shift gears for this thing. There is the machine part done. Now we just got to do the reassembly. I cut up a couple pieces of key stock. I just took them over there on the grinder and ground the edges down. And uh, kind of put in there. Fits nicely. Everything looks good. Just need to put it together. So for some reason, I've had a bunch of trouble here uh, in this video and there's a couple others I lost several segments here through GoPros uh, corrupted the videos or something I'm not sure uh, it might have been the SD card I threw the SD card away I bought a new computer new SD cards a new SD card reader and I ordered a new GoPro and maybe between that we'll we'll get it fixed anyway several of these videos lost the audio several of the videos lost the video they were audio only I don't understand it, it doesn't make any sense but I wanted to kind of explain that. Of course, it was this one and the one at the very end, too, where I close it out, where you actually need to hear me talk. Um, it was, it's gone. But I guess if you don't like it, you can uh, get your money back. You get what you pay for here. Um, but, but that's kind of the deal.
hopefully I'll have this straightened out. I don't know why I have so much trouble with these uh, corrupted video files, but this just seems to be like a, a daily occurrence for me on the Zach Life here. Okay, I got everything hauled out here, I think. We are ready to put this thing back together. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a gasket out of thick gasket material for the far side. I'm not going to put the seals in these end plates yet. Uh, we're going to assemble it with the knowing that it's going to have to come back apart. I'm not sure exactly how close uh, the distance between this bearing and that bearing is in comparison to the other one. And so I'm going to start with an extra thick shim, extra thick gasket and then we will adjust from there. Uh, these, these gaskets or shims uh, that take up space between here and the housing are what adjust the bearing race. The bearing race sits against this in and out of that, uh, in and out of that housing to preload those bearings. I know a lot of people will just take a little hammer and tap their way around and that works, but this is really thick gasket material and I don't like to beat the, the sharp lip off of uh, all my equipment. All right, I'm going to drive this other race in. And I want to take this seal housing and start it and snug it up, you know, loosely without any shims in it. And we ought to be able to visually see or measure Alright, so we're going to get pretty lucky here. I've got these bolts tight and there is preload on this but I can still turn it. Uh, we need just a little bit of gap here. I was kind of getting scared it wasn't going to get tight. Um, I think this shaft must be about the same as the other one. You got to remember that that dimension between bearing to bearing. I just measured that with a uh, with a tape measure. It was not super accurate. I mean, it was within a sixteenth, but uh, you know, not super accurate as far as machining goes. And anyway, when we took this part on the far side, it just had Permatex on it. There wasn't any kind of shimmer gasket, and all these shims were on this side. And we added that sixteenth of an inch gasket, and that's probably about what was came out of here. So this is just a little bit too tight, but it is not very much too tight. I'm tempted to run it, but I'm not going to. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to take this back apart. We got to put a seal in the other side, put a seal in this side, and I'm going to put the thinnest shim I've got underneath this one.
I am going to use a little bit of this retaining compound. Um, I'm not worried about these falling out, but I'm concerned about them leaking. This little jack shaft has always leaked a little bit, but the problem with it is it only holds about half a quart of oil or something like that. And um, it looks like spray and brake cleaner on that was probably not the smartest thing. It dissolved the whatever's on the outside of them. Anyway, um, some silicone would be fine, but, well, I got silicone too, but this is what's in my hand, so this is what I'm using. And of course, I don't have a uh, seal driver with me. So I'm gonna see if I can destroy this thing with a hammer. <laughs> All right, I just looked up and I wasn't recording. I don't know where I left you off there, but I knocked the seal in this thing, uh, kind of clean this up, clean these holes out, and, uh, and then greased, put some grease on the shaft and the seal so we don't run the seal dry in the bearing. I'm gonna slap this thing together. These stupid freaking GoPros, it's got 45% battery and it keeps going off. Again, I don't know where I lost you there. There is just a little bit of preload. I can tell this is just a little bit, has a little bit of drag, but not, you know, not much. It's exactly how I wanted it. It's zero lash and uh, probably after it runs for an hour, it'll probably seat and wear just a little bit and it'll be, you know, no actual preload and no slack. So next we've got to put the shiv's back on it. We're gonna have this thing knocked out. Okay, I got to line these shivs up. Normally you just tighten everything up and move the motor, but I'm gonna try to keep from having to move the motor. Um, you can just look down. I know there's a shadow there. Y'all probably can't see anything, but uh, just look down and line these up. And then I'm going to fudge this in by maybe, I don't know, 3 16ths of an inch or something. So when I tighten this up, it'll pull it back in line. Thank you. 
one of the dangers of putting indices on that hub is it will allow you to get it much much tighter and uh, <clears throat> you can actually I have done this twice with pretty good sized shivs like this with the East all hub you can actually split the, the shiv it'll crack right through here before you twist the bolts off if you don't put that on there you'll twist the bolts off before you break the hub I think I'm gonna put some oil in this thing and put those belts on it and we'll just let it sit here and free wheel for a few minutes I don't know that that needs it, but it's certainly not going to hurt anything. That's some 140 weight gear oil. sound kind of rough I'm going to have to work on it probably needs greased well I lost the audio here on this last clip as well but uh, I'm just basically I'm going to roll the belts on it here run up and crank it up and get it to making laps this is so stupid I don't know why I have so much trouble with, with files you think computers nowadays it wouldn't be such a problem but as we always say appreciate you watching like share subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one